Welcome to Information Technology class. My name is Suzanne Jumbo. Today we'll be looking at the theme, Basic Computer Operations and Concepts. And our topic is Historical Development of Computers. Now at the end of this lesson, you should be able to list early counting devices and name mechanical counting devices. You should also be able to compare electronic counting devices with modern day computers. And you should state the contribution, you should be able to state the contributions of some IT inventors. And lastly, you should be able to identify the five generations of computers. In the early years, counting was done with the fingers. Don't count one, two, three. It was also done with pebbles. You know pebbles, what we find by the seashore. Stones, counting was done with stones. And it was done with sticks. But with modern day inventions, we can use our computers to count. Now, counting devices were developed in various phases. We'll look at them one after the other. They were developed in this phase, the early counting devices, the mechanical counting and calculating devices, the electromechanical counting devices, and the electronic counting devices. Now let's take them one after the other. The early counting devices are fingers, pebbles, stones, sticks, carries, sticks, fingers. These are the early counting devices. Now the mechanical counting devices, we have the abacus. The abacus is made up of beads and strings. And it was used in the early years to add and subtract numbers. We also have the slide rule. This is the slide rule. It was used also to add and subtract numbers. Now let's look at the electromechanical counting devices. Remember, I've looked at early counting devices. We've looked at mechanical counting devices. Now let's look at the electro mechanical counting devices. We have John Napier's bones. We have Blaise Pascal's machine. We have Gottfried Leibniz's machine. Joseph Jacquard's loom. Charles Babbage analytical machine. And we also have contributions made by Philip Emeguali. So let's take them. We have Napier's bones. It was invented by John Napier. He's a Scottish mathematician. He created these Napier bones using rods. And it's used to perform simple arithmetic calculations. We we'll look at Pascal. Pascal's calculator was invented by Blaise Pascal. That's his name. He's a French mathematician. And this Pascaline is made up of wheels and gears. You can move them to add up numbers quickly. Now we'll look at the stepped reckoner. The stepped reckoner was invented by Gottfried Leibniz. He's a German mathematician. And this stepped reckoner is used to carry and multiply numbers of up to 5 and 12 digits. Thus, you can multiply numbers easily. Numbers that have five digits and even up to 12 digits. The step reckoner is used to multiply them. Now, look at Jacquard's loom. The device was invented by Joseph Marie Charles, but he was popularly known as Jacquard. He's a French weaver and merchant. This is him, Joseph Marie Charles. A loom is used in the textile industry. The mechanical loom he made was controlled by punch cards and it's used to create designs on clothes. Now look at Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage 
designed the analytical engine in 1833. Let's take note of the year. He was a British mathematician. Remember, I've looked at Scottish, German, French. Charles Babbage was a British mathematician. And the analytical engine was used by punch cards too. It was operated using punched cards and is used for general mathematical operations. Charles Babbage was also known as the father of computer. Why is he known as the father of computer? It's because of his concepts that were used in the design of our computers. Now, his analytical engine is used to store data, to input, and to give out the information that you've put into the computer. And it's also used to transfer information amongst components. Remember, the analytical engine could store data, can impute and also give out information, and it can transfer information amongst its components. Now let's look at Philip Emeguali. We're coming home. Philip Emeguali is a Nigerian inventor and scientist. He designed programs that enabled computers to do calculations easily, can do it quickly, under seconds. The speed was much more than that of a supercomputer. As he designed different programs that can help with the movement of data at that particular time. Now let's look at the electronic counting devices. First of all, we looked at the early counting devices. We looked at the mechanical counting devices. We've also looked at the electromechanical counting devices. Now we're coming to this phase, the electronic counting devices. And we'll look at John von Neumann's contributions. We want to know what he did. This is John von Neumann. John von Neumann was a Hungarian-American mathematician who made major contributions in the use of memory in digital computers to store both sequences of instructions and data. Some of these contributions are in linear programming. When you get to higher levels in computer studies, you would know about linear programming and also self-replicating machines. His contributions helped in these phases and others. He also helped in physics, in mathematics, but in computing, he made contributions in linear programming, self-replicating machines, and so on. Now we've looked at the different phases of which computers were developed. Now let's see their generations. There are five generations of computer. We'll have the first generation from 1940 to 1956. We have the second generation from 1956 to 1963. We have the third generation from 1964 to 1971. The fourth generation from 1971 till present, that's the fourth generation. And we have the fifth generation which is currently being developed. Now let's start with the first generation computers. These computers were big. You can see the first generation computers, how they can occupy a whole room. They use vacuum tubes and magnetic drums. And examples of first generation computers are ENIAC. ENIAC stands for Electronic Numerical Integrator and computer and UNIVAC. UNIVAC stands for Universal Automatic Computer. That's the UNI, Universal Automatic Computer. So these are examples of the first generation computers. Now let's move over to the second generation computers. In the first generation, we said they use vacuum tubes. In the second generation, they use transistors as their electronic component instead of vacuum tubes. Now the computers in this generation were mainly used in atomic industries. 
Examples are the IBM 7000, IBM 650, Atlas. They were also large computers. They were also big. Now, the third generation computers. In this generation, the integrated circuit was used. The first generation used vacuum tubes. Second generation used transistors. In this generation, IC was used. What does IC stand for? Integrated circuit. It was used as an electronic component. Now the size, the computer size was reduced. Can we see that that of the other generations were so massive that they could occupy a whole room. But in the third generation, they became smaller. The, the size was reduced. And the speed, obviously, of the processor was faster compared to that of the first generation and the second generation. Examples are the IBM 360 series. Uh, examples of the third generation computers. Now the fourth generation computers, I'm sure these are the computers we all know. The fourth generation computers, they are classified as today's computers. That's the computers you can see today. They are the fourth generation computers. They are widely used. This is a desktop. We've seen a desktop. This is a laptop. They are used in schools, hospitals, offices, even at home, and so on. Examples of the fourth generation computers are the HP laptop, Acer, notebook, MacBook, and so on. In this generation, the microprocessor was used. The first generation was the vacuum tubes. The second generation was transistors. The third generation was the IC integrated circuits. In the fourth generation, they used the microprocessor. Now look at the fifth generation of computers. They are also called the super computers, and they are still being developed. Examples are robots. We've watched movies where we've seen robots. They are under the fifth generation of computers. Now they have high storage capacity. They are very fast, they are intelligent, and they are very efficient. And in this generation, they use the artificial intelligence. Now let's summarize all we've looked at. We said counting devices have advanced from the use of fingers. We said they used fingers in the early years to count pebbles, stones, and so on, to today's computers. That's from using fingers to count. We now use our computers to count. Now, the computer has also advanced. We saw the first generation computer, how they are so large, to the fifth generation, although we're using the fourth generation computers, which we listed examples. Our personal computers are under the fourth generation computers. Charles Babbage is known as the father of computer. Some of others who contributed towards development include John Napier. We looked at the Napier bone, Blaise Pascal. We looked at the Pascaline or the Pascal calculator. Gottfried Leibniz. We saw his invention, the stepped reckoner. Joseph Jacquard invented the Jacquard loom. And Charles Babbage. We looked at Charles Babbage, the analytical engine that he invented. And Philip Emeguali, the contributions he made towards the computer. Now, before we go, let's take our test question. Question one. The third generation of computers lasted from dash to dash. A, 1964 to 1971. B, 1956 to 1963. C, 1940 to 1956. If you chose A, you're correct. The third generation of computers lasted from 1964 to 1971. Charles Babbage designed the Dash machine. A, Pascaline. B, Analytical. C, Tabulating. If you chose B, you're correct. Charles Babbage designed the Analytical machine. Now we've come to the end of our class. I hope you enjoyed the class. I'll see you next time. Bye.